Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are doing an autopsy on last night's horrible loss to the Columbus Blue Jackets. As you can see, I've got Cam here right in front of me, at Coombe. I've got the nation Chris wearing his turkey hat as per tradition. Oh, we got Dustin Nielsen in the chat here today. Dusty, Dusty welcome. Hi, and we got nation Dan who just took off his hoodie because he didn't want everybody to think that he's Yo, only got one shirt. That's dirty. <laughs> that nation was, Dan just took off his only that was, shirt. That was, that was just savage. You just outed Dan as being a guy who wears the same thing every day, which I know is it. something he's not proud of. Nils but Dusty says he's driving. Sure. Dusty, do not text Ooh. us while you're driving, bro, man. We're safety first and friendship. We're the safety same, first and friendship. Same three pairs of shorts all the time. All the time. Thanks, Oilers. Thanks for 100% of the time, Dan's wearing the same thing. Yo, that's, uh, that's my life. <laughs> all right, as you all know, the Oilers lost real bad last night on Fan Appreciation Night at Rogers Place. Coombs got the day after recap I had to wrap up at last night. Chris is here looking handsome. Dan has got our topics for today. Dan, what do you got? Let's start it off. First thing, let's talk about uh, our predictions about yesterday. Uh, we had uh, myself guessing that it was going to be a 3-2 to two win in overtime. Oops. Chris, 4-3 to three win for the Oilers. Oops. Oops. Mr. Bag Milk with a 4-2 to two win for the Oilers. Yikes. And one at Coombe with a 3-1 to one victory for the Blue Jackets. Also wrong. So very That's wrong. close to being right. That's we're closer than you guys were. The yeah. only two that knew what was happening were me and Frank. Shout We're the Frank. only ones that understand and the hockey. Frank was Frank was one hundred percent correct on this one. But you know what? Yeah, Coom, you didn't see that offense coming. You didn't see that Blue Jackets offense. No. Was it the Blue Jackets offense or how bad the Oilers defense was, Chris? Uh, probably more B than A, but a little bit of A also. Mm. Thomas Vanek played really well. It was fun for ten minutes though. Uh, yeah, the ten. I had the best ten minutes of my life. Shut up. Connor Shut up. scored hundred points. Connor scored forty goals. In one game? Yes. That's a lot of points for one yes. game. Also, a linesman got injured very badly, like, unfortunately for him. You, but look, that happy, all... but you look happy about that. No, it, 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 it was just, like, chaotic. It all happened in three minutes. It's wild. It was wild. Did you peek in on my notes? Because that was our next topic. We're going to be talking about that linesman and that uh, freak injury that happened. That was, yes. uh, so if you didn't watch the game, basically what happened is, what was his name? Steve, Steve Barton? Barton? Steve Barton. Steve Bartman. Not a foul ball. Not in the 2003 World Series, and now no. he's a linesman in the NHL. No, 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 no. no. I, uh, I did some research on Steve Bartman. He's a former NHL player, apparently. What? The all, linesman? All, yeah, all referees in the... Uh, oh, Steve Bartman. Now. I thought you said Steve Bartman. I thought we were looping back to the, the Chicago Cubs. There is no way Steve Bartman played a single shift in the he NHL. He did not play in the NHL at all, no. He didn't even, uh, he didn't even catch a foul ball either. He didn't catch it. Fucking guy. Moises Alou wouldn't have caught it either, so there's no reason to get upset about Bartman for that whole thing. It wasn't his fault, not a big deal. It was uh, the Cubs' fault for not having a good bullpen coming in after Mark Pryor. But that's Adam Lask Harris it. jumping in with the 2003 NLCS. Sorry, yeah, fuck, sorry. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, baseball no. guy. It's still spring we training. Here, man. I still got one, I still got one day. I still baseball got, guy. I still got one day of practice left before the season starts. I'm not quite ready yet. Baseball guy. Mm. So, I want to talk about the, the linesman thing here real quick. It was... To me, the weird part about it was, first of all, glad he's okay. News came out today that he's okay. That's the most important thing. But the weird thing was, for as much as Sportsnet cuts away from plays, we miss face-offs sometimes, they rode the whole thing through. There was no commercial break. There's a lot of, like, awkward silences, and Drew Mander just repeating the same thing about... And they even we laughed about how they zoomed in on Conor McDavid into the slow-mo of how he said, I feel so bad. It was weird. It's breaking news. Shout out to uh, Nation fan Travis Dakin for for saying that. Yeah, they'll miss they'll miss 100 percent of the faceoffs that they want to. But, but we had to watch a lifeless Steve Barton laying on the ice. It was scary. Like yeah. I can imagine, like his family, if they oh, yeah. caught wind of it or were watching the game or whatever. Like that's something you never want to see. Yeah. Uh, another fun fact for you: Steve Barton is also an American actor. Okay. Probably not the same. <laughs> Probably not the same. <laughs> and on to the next topic. All right, Dan, what's coming up next? Our next topic, we were actually going to talk about fan appreciation night and, uh, you know, the interaction that the uh, the Oilers give us on a nightly basis. Was anybody here at the game last night? I don't believe so. I think I think Wanye Gretz was the only one that... Yes. Wanye was at the game. I think they only gave out flags. Is that correct? Yes, I believe. That, well... And no, free popcorn. I was going to say, somewhere. and they gave out free popcorn, and also they dropped pizza from the sky, apparently. What? I Although saw videos heard of that. that uh, the popcorn was only available at one or so concession stands at on the main level. How do you feel about that, Chris, as somebody who generally sits in the upper bowl? I'd rather them just drop popcorn from the ceiling. 
Just handfuls. Yes. Throw it at people. Like, I don't care if it's in the bag. So. You hungry? You want a snack attack? Here's a <laughs> handful of popcorn. I don't even care if there's an umbrella attack. Or an non umbrella. Jesperson runs out with a cannon. He's blasting popcorn, popcorn in people's cannon. face. Another popcorn talk. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Jesperson. Love you, buddy. Coom, what do you think of last night's game? Fan appreciation night dropping a huge turd on the ice. I, I hope you're asking me what I think about last night's Blue Jays game. In which Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit a walk-off home run in the ninth inning, which is extremely good. No, uh, he did. Is that what you're asking about? It's true. I think that's what you're asking. About. No, that's we've got. That was last night's game. When you say last night's game, that's what I think you're referencing as the Toronto Blue Jays, because it's springtime and the Oilers season is over. So when you say the game, you're talking about the Jays. You if you want to talk about the Oilers game, you have to say the Oilers game, because now we're into we're into baseball season now. So what we've got going on today is I asked Dan to kind of look up what other teams are doing for their fan appreciation night. Uh, we have a friend of the nation that was at the Anaheim game for their fan appreciation night. Apparently, Dan, they gave out a million dollars worth of prizes that night. Doesn't surprise me. It seems like all the other teams have to, uh, you know, put out some good stuff for their fans to show up. Oilers fans, apparently, we're just going to show up in droves no matter what, and, and the Oilers are willing to take that on. My question for you guys, Chris, I'll start with you. If you're going to a game on Fan Appreciation Night, what would you feel is an acceptable gift or something you would look forward to receiving? Well, now I think like having a million dollar budget for Fan Appreciation Night is a necessity. I would personally like, uh, I know they get made fun of lots, but I love bobbleheads. Love a bobblehead. I have a Ryan Smitty uh, bobblehead. Don't have a Conor McDavid bobblehead. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, other things, I would like uh, gift bags. Sort of like what they give out at the. <laughs> sort of what they give dream out. Dream big, the, Chris. Dream big. Like at the Oscars, the Oscars get fancy chocolate. They probably get silver of some sort, maybe a watch. Chocolate and silver, the frankincense. Oh, like super and... expensive stuff. Like Dan, silver what? watches. You name it. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, what? I want wow, silver. I love talk Dan, what would you like for your fan appreciation? You know what? Gift? I think that. The most appropriate thing the others could have given away was a couple free beers to everybody. Now I know that that hasn't Whoa. turned out well in the past. But I think uh, I think that this team deserves to buy a drink or two. You know, we've all made mistakes in our past and had to buy a drink for a buddy. I think the Oilers need to be starting to do like, that kind of stuff. Like a T-shirt that says "We're sorry." Yeah, yeah, that would be great. I, yeah, no. Coming off of that, I think one of two things: either like a Peter Trelli dunk tank, where he's in like a lobby, oh, and you can throw <laughs> the money for charity, throw like tomatoes at him or something, and be like. I don't, think, like, I don't think you know how dunk tanks work. There's <laughs> <laughs> a dunk tank where you can dunk him or throw tomatoes at him, or he walks around and he, he personally apologizes to everybody in the building and he's like, look, just guys, shakes hand. I'm extremely sorry for what I've done. I am not an NHL general manager. I just thought of the best one. A hug from Connor McDavid for each fan that attends the game. See, no, I would feel bad because guy. Connor was... already battled illness, Dan. He doesn't need germs from 18,000 rowdies. I just, I just want to hug him so much. Also, I still feel bad for Con. Well, I don't feel bad because he gets paid a ton. But I feel bad when he had to sit and sign autographs for like eight hours. While every other player probably went home. How many autographs have you signed? Like one. And it was my own baseball. And no one even got it. <laughs> we're gonna throw that baseball over the. Uh, no, over we're the gonna throw the baseball over the river. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's that's the one that we're gonna throw. Bag milk says that he can chuck a baseball across the North Saskatchewan River. I'm gonna fucking hit White Ave from the banks of the <laughs> North Saskatchewan. No, you're not. No, so stay not. tuned for that in the summertime. Yeah, check, yeah. That's like our summer project. Is uh, we're we're gonna stop producing content. And we're all gonna try and throw a baseball over the river, <laughs> and that's what we're gonna spend our whole summer doing. We've got sixty seconds left, Dan. What's next? The last thing is the is the biggest thing of the night. Connor McDavid's three point night. Uh, Cam, you predicted that he would have one point. Chris, you predicted he'd have two points. So, uh, you know, let's talk about Connor for a second here. Connor. Does Connor kind of erase bad losses when he does things like he does? Yeah, it doesn't feel like we lost 7-7, seven, seven, right? 7-3. Seven, 7-7 three. Seven, seven is not a loss. 7-3. <laughs> it was 7-3. Seven, 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 I don't, like, I don't really feel bad about last night at all. Connor what about got with the turkey hat points. Well, that sucks. Like, this reminds me that we lost, but if I wasn't wearing the turkey hat, it wouldn't feel like we lost last night. Could I find McDavid's great performances to be like extremely numbing because it's like how on earth are they possibly not good with a player that's good it makes no sense it's like it's jarring to think about dan yeah uh it's uh coom just took me into a deep dark despair. yeah you were just taking a dip in lake dan <laughs> yeah, <Mike. laughs> that was, uh, yeah it's tough to watch it, it, i mean yeah you're right it, it, i think it softens the blow a little bit but it is uh it is just really tough to watch a team 
when you're up 3 nothing and we should have been able to run away with it, lose 7-3. I was having a good time for a moment, and then it just in a flash, it disappeared, Chris. Ten minutes, though. Just like that <laughs> baseball that Bloody Grow Jr. hit just disappeared into the Montreal night. Baseball season. <laughs> Let's go. BlueJaysNation.com. Go read Cam's <laughs> baseball content. Go read Cam's baseball erotica. Is what, is what that website is. And with that, we will close off on this post-game video. Thanks for watching. If you've got recommendations, let us know. If you want Chris to wear this hat all the time, let us know. Because I'll If you, you think Dan should get a second shirt, let us know. No. No. Whatever you guys are thinking of these, let us know. We're going to keep doing them. We're going to have some fun with them. We're going to do some upgrades as we go along. Coom, anything else? Enjoy the nice weather.